Hi everyone, Home Thinny Drone Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Richard Dawson album, The Ruby Chord. This is a brand new LP from English singer and songwriter Mr. Richard Dawson, who has been on quite the creative streak as of late between his slightly related Peasant and 2020 albums that he dropped a few years ago, where he reflected on problems plaguing humanity through vivid storytelling based both in the old world and the new. There was also his intriguing pandemic record, his recent collab with the band Circle Henke as well, where he was fully able to embrace his progressive rock leanings with a band that has been active in the genre on the Finnish scene for decades now. And now he returns to us with The Ruby Chord, which looks to be his longest album yet and also maybe the most perplexing. However, it wouldn't be a Richard Dawson album if you weren't questioning the man's motivations at least a little bit. The obvious elephant in the room on this record that I have to address in its seven song track list is the opener. While Dawson is no stranger to throwing a long one or two onto an album, uh, the first track on this LP is 41 minutes long. 41 whole ass minutes while the rest of the tracks on this project uh, last anywhere from two to 10, which is odd, but interesting that uh, this one track adds up to about uh, like half or so of the record's overall runtime. So I guess it's not like the vast majority of the LP is just this one track. And I suppose in general, this is not a practice that is entirely unheard of, kicking your record off with this large multi-phased song. I mean, look at Pink Floyd's Adam Hart Mother, one of many instances of such a thing, I'm sure. Ultimately, the question is whether or not this track is a great start to this album. Is it a great addition to this album overall? To start pulling it apart, I will say one quarter of the track really the whole first section of it, is spent booting up effectively. It is 10 minutes of a very raw but rich mix of bass, guitar, drums, some violin as well, eventually harp. And while all this instrumentation is existing in the same space, it's not really playing together in a formal sense. This whole thing is a very loose and potentially improvised passage where no one single direction or melody is being gestured toward in an overt way. The whole thing doesn't really tighten up until Richard's vocals enter the fray around the 11 minute mark. Now, I'm not averse to a long intro in concept, but I can't say this one enhances is the listening experience overall. It does effectively throw me into a lull that makes Richard's vocals hit pretty hard when they eventually uh, begin. But still, it's not a particularly eventful 10 minutes that this track kicks off with. And I don't think I'm being unreasonable wanting to get to the meat of a 41 minute song a bit faster. Once things do eventually get going on this track, The Hermit, it's not a bad piece. Richard is successfully able to create a piece that feels like a centuries old musical odyssey, composed by a humble bard who had no other means of documenting it other than putting it into this 41 minute long track. The lyrics also contain references to the new and old world like many songs did on Peasant in 2020, kind of blending these two different paradigms together. And yes, while this track is massively long, its various sections are pretty easy to pull apart given all of the different melodic shifts, instrumental palette shifts, a few different points where the instrumentation will completely fall away under Richard's vocals and then he will have kind of a, a verse or two to establish a new melody or a new part of the story, only for the instrumentation to come back. The most impressive thing about the song overall is its completely organic flow. This could have been recorded in a myriad of different ways in one whole performance in sections, but the whole thing really does feel like one holistic experience from front to back. I sort of envision Richard on this track as being the captain of just a massive ship that he is steering from point A to point B, with no major missteps as he describes the thoughts, experiences, and tragic backstory of a lone traveler surviving by whatever means that he can. The story here eventually reaches a peak where he comes across a knight who is in a dire situation. Uh, there, there's not a great ending <laughs> at this point that I will not spoil, but regardless, the very ending of the track musically is captivating with all these uh, warm and beautiful group vocals coming together. Just a massive piece that while I am not in love with it from front to back, it is one of the most impressive feats of Richard's discography thus far, and one of the most ambitious musical moments I've heard this year. So from here, there are six more tracks to go, many highlights among them, but as an overall listening experience, I'll say at this point, I feel like I've already expended an album's worth of focus and energy. <laughs> 
just getting through this one track, which is odd because I'm no stranger to albums that last like 75 to 80 minutes, but there is something to be said for much of that runtime being broken up into smaller song size chunks as opposed to one gigantic story. But thinking of the totality of The Hermit, is it a tale that really required 41 whole minutes to be told? Not really. The thing is more of an epic in presentation than it is content. But with that being said, more great moments on this record continue with the gentle folk rock instrumentation and Richard's weary falsetto vocals on Thicker Than Water, which builds out nicely and gradually with more harp, less string layers, and group vocals. There's also an interesting contrast going on between the music and the lyrics too, where again, what I'm hearing compositionally and aesthetically feels very old world, but Richard's lyrics run more like the end of the world, as the story here features a protagonist who is kind of bumming his way through a once great city, taking shelter in a burnt out van, finding relics from his past. The track from end to end is vivid, sad, and beautiful. The Fool takes an interesting turn as well, at least instrumentally, with a lot of heavy beats, bass, and some electronic glitches in the mix. It has almost an industrial edge to it, maybe kind of a folktronic thing going on. Also, the way Richard is effectively able to transition from these moments to more rustic folk rock sections without missing a beat is maybe the greatest feat on this LP outside of, obviously, the massive intro, because it happens so smoothly and effortlessly without uh, uh, resulting in this hideous aesthetic clash. Plus, the story hidden within this track is pretty captivating as well about a love that uh, falls apart in a very tragic and kind of gross way. Falling apart and post-society are also themes that continue onto the track Museum, where we, the listener, are talked to directly by someone who seems like uh, the greeter at a museum, and they describe uh, this place as holding relics and pieces from a past a dozen or so centuries ago when uh, humans were still alive. I don't know uh, what that makes the person talking to us or or us for that matter, but the music across this track is consistently pretty, elegant, uh, a little sour and uh, rough around the edges as well. Seems that over the years, Richard Dawson has really kind of nailed this balance that he's been going for for a long time. Honestly, the track makes the end of the human race sound like something to look forward to. Now, the tip of an arrow is the second lengthiest statement on this entire LP at 10 minutes. Not as crazy about this one as I would have liked to have been, as I think the verses are a bit long-winded and convoluted and they don't really pay off until we get these heavy galloping riffs that give the whole track a sense of righteousness. But I will say this, one thing I do love about this song is Richard's ability to continue focusing topically on these themes of isolation and survival in a treacherous world. From here we have the track No One, which is an interlude piece loaded with uh, silence and drone and radio static. It literally is like a sign of no one, and really does put the overall progression of Richard's past couple of records into perspective when you take the uh, beginnings in the old world and uh, a more kind of rudimentary world portrayed on peasant, transition from that into a modern world facing many of the same problems or a whole host of new problems on 2020, and then now we have just basically like uh, the, the the end of both of those worlds, the end of society as we know it, and what few stragglers are left uh, on this one. From here we get a very pleasant and heartwarming finishing cut that feels almost like a thank you for listening, for uh, traveling with Richard on this journey. Lyrics toward the end like over unseen churning seas we go uh, provide the sense of adventure and almost this kind of cliffhanger energy where the travels and the survival and the struggles depicted on this record and the previous records I mentioned earlier uh, are just like ongoing and a part of this just uh, infinite continuum. In that sense, I think it ties the overall themes of this record up very nicely and maybe even uh, whatever has been going on narratively between these latest three records from Richard. Now, I will say of these three albums, the Ruby Chord is maybe my least favorite, but I still think the LP overall is quite the accomplishment for Richard. While some parts of this record I found to be too difficult to get much out of. In a way, it's kind of fitting because the progression of this thing is as rocky and as unforgiving as the post-apocalyptic world that it's about. I'm sure given Richard's conceptual tendencies uh, that might have been intentional. And I encourage anybody to listen to this LP if you are looking for a singer-songwriter record that is daring, bold, loaded with interesting stories, and challenging. I'm feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that we can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Richard Dawson, forever.